Abnormal and emergency situations. Definitions. Abnormal situation, a situation which is non-normal, not usual, or not typical. Emergency, sudden and unforeseen event, requiring prompt action. Study topics. Review these topics from Ops Manuals, FCOM, Jepson, and Cabin Safety Manual, Managing Failures in General. ECAM Correct Handling, Abnormal and Emergency Procedure General. Engine Failures and Fire Drills. Engine Failure in Flight, Strategies and Procedures. Decompression and Emergency Descent, General and Procedures. Use of and Principles Behind Drift Down Charts. Emergency During Takeoff, Landing, or Taxi. Emergency Evacuation. Passenger Evacuation, Generalized Guidance and Specific Procedures, Fire and Smoke. Fuel Emergency. Communication, General. Communication, In Case of Emergency. Interception Procedures. Communications Failure, Company Policy. Communications Failure, ICAO Procedure and National Requirements, Aerodrome Emergency Services. Simulated Emergency. Crew Incapacitation. Dangerous Goods, Emergency Procedure. Non-normal procedures. Non-normal checklists. Memory items. When flying Airbus your most important sources of information regarding how to handle abnormal situations and emergencies will be in FCOM, FCTM, and QRH. FCOM, Abnormal and Emergencies, Supplementary Techniques, Special Operations. FCTM, Flight Crew Training Manual for your type of aircraft. QRH. Judging and handling abnormal and emergency situations. These references clearly cover a wide spectrum of possibilities, from the merely inconvenient occurrence that requires nothing more than making a tech log entry to the potentially life-threatening situation. Clearly, some of the non-normal, QRH, drills are more urgent than others. ECAM or QRH will not tell you what is and what is not defined as an emergency. Some situations, for example collision avoidance, which are clearly emergencies, are not covered by either one of them. Reliance on the non-normal drills for every conceivable situation eventually is just not possible. They simply cannot be made to cater for every eventuality. So, the big question is, what does constitute an emergency? As already seen the complexity of the situation makes it unfeasible to catalog all abnormal situations into emergency and non-emergency. The following is a blanket definition to use as a yardstick for any abnormal circumstance. An emergency situation is one which threatens the life, health or well-being of any passenger, crew member or person on the ground or which threatens or is reasonably likely to threaten the safety of the aircraft. Aviation history reveals too many occasions where inappropriate action by the crew has turned the proverbial drama into something of a crisis. Worse has occurred when a minor malfunction has resulted in a major accident because of incorrect crew action. There are four possible incorrect paths to follow when dealing with an abnormal situation and more importantly, they are not difficult to avoid. 1. Failure to fly the aircraft. Unacceptable. As captain, you must decide who is flying the airplane and who is to execute the drill, for example, PF or PNF duties. Ensure that PF is not unduly distracted by the requirements of any drill, checklist, or other action from proper flight path control. This is good old-fashioned flight deck management. If you think that this cannot happen consider the TriStar that flew into the Everglades whilst the three-man crew changed a bulb. 2. Incorrect identification of a problem or failure. This is commonly the result of an incorrect snap diagnosis. This of course is a failure to gather and analyze all the pertinent facts. It can be avoided by using all available sources, including ATC, engineer on headset, and cabin crew, to obtain relevant information. Remember that a complete picture of what is happening has to be built up. If you don't gather all the information you will not be able to create a complete and accurate picture. Caution: The phraseology of non-pilots to describe an event may differ from that which we would consider standard. You must therefore be prepared to ask the right questions and if necessary confirm, by other means, that the event described is indeed what you understood and also that which has occurred. At best an incorrect diagnosis and subsequent drill will make your life much harder. You will have to undo the incorrect drill and then, having correctly identified the problem, action the correct drill. At worst the situation may become so confused by actioning an incorrect drill that an irrecoverable situation is created or loss of control results. 3. Overreaction to a situation. This is typified by an inappropriate and usually excessively rapid response to the initial event. In response to a shot of adrenaline a somewhat panicky do something anything. 
attitude has taken over rather than a deliberate response to an identified problem or threat. In most cases, a few moments of mature reflection rather than a knee-jerk reaction would provide a better result. An example, failing to confirm that the reported galley fire was exactly that and not just smoke from grease spilt on the oven inserts. The result in emergency descent, diversion, and evacuation were therefore a clear overreaction. 4. Underreaction to a situation, indecisive, a situation where a serious threat to the aircraft or occupants is not recognized, recognition is unduly delayed, or action is not taken despite correct recognition. This can create a situation where remedial action becomes impossible. The Air Canada DC-9 at Cincinnati in 1983 with a rear toilet fire is an example. Over four minutes were lost before diversion commenced and then several suitable airfields, or runways were overflown en route to a major terminal. Note, in many cases, the cabin crew is responsible for the initial incorrect identification and poor communication. For example, an alarmist cry of fire instead of smoke from the oven creates the seed of an inappropriate response by their overreaction to a situation. Unfortunately, too many people do believe the old saying. There is no smoke without fire and thus make a connection that may not exist. Equally cabin crew who are in denial of the reality of a situation can feed you reassuring words, and maintain a continued affirmation that the situation is under control. This will contribute to a delay in taking appropriate action. It is worth noting, that an initial over or under reaction to the event in their domain by the cabin crew will result in a similar response by the flight deck crew. Unless of course, the flight deck crew asks the correct questions in order to obtain the correct answers. Summary the ultimate responsibility for dealing with abnormal situations lies, as always, with the captain. You must gather and analyze all available information about the situation. Identify the nature of the problem or threat. Take appropriate and timely initial action. Decide on a subsequent course of action. This will depend on the success of the initial action, for example, an engine fire warning, is it extinguished or not? Very different courses of action are required depending on the outcome. Continue to monitor and review the situation. Remember that no two events are identical. Each situation must be examined and treated as an individual case. There is no such thing as a standard failure or emergency situation. Each is unique and needs to be treated as such. The operations manual, OM Part A, provides guidance on the management of emergencies. The specific details are up to you.